Bonjour tout le monde, merci beaucoup d'être ce vendredi là pour ouvrir quelque chose de notre travail chez Zorsklein et chez l'Institut Twin. Um, but I'm going to talk in English and uh, <clears throat> first of all, thank you for inviting me to talk in your event here in Paris <laughs> and thank you also uh, the award we, we received yesterday about our work with, on sustainability at the Amazon forest. Um, I like that, uh, the new heroes, I love that. Because we, yes, of course, we are really heroes. I, th I think most of, of you here, of us, we work or we think about on sustainability. We are very romantic people. Not naive, that maybe could look, we, could, we could look like naive, huh? but um, this work, this film I'm going to show, uh, some units, it's about our work after 20 years. Now in 2018 we're doing 20 years of my first movement, for our first project we did in Brazil. And um, we are talking about the name of the film about us, it's called ASAP, as soon as possible, as sustainable as possible. Um, you know what, uh, I think to bring the success to to be invited to be to be here to get an award and to be talking some conference about our, our work is about uh, it's about of course the ideology of sustainability but most was to to be to have a kind of audacity to 20 years ago when we could see i i wanted to use oscan as my platform to bring sustainable sustainability in a way using materials, uh, develop those materials on, on poor communities in Brazil or in far away into the forest or uh, with the industries in Brazil and change the idea to be sustainability. Of course, we couldn't do 100% sustainable. But in that time, that time, society and certifications and institutions, they always said that we should be 100% sustainable. But people don't, couldn't understand that we are coming from almost 200 years of uh, industrialization era, era. Of course, we are not going to change to be 100% in one decade or in one day. Because some people can, if you see, for example, so many, many other companies here that are showing uh, no one, most of them are 100% sustainable. And, and for me, it doesn't mean that a product or service must be 100% sustainable. What if, it's you have, if you have only 1% or 2% that's sustainable in that product or service, if that 1% or 2% is a real sustainable, a social impact or, sust or in a cultural way, or uh, environmental way. But maybe just 1% of a product serves, it means it can be 100% of a project. I start up a project that are just beginning. Because when we talk about sustainability, we are talking about innovation. We are still in innovation. Innovation needs scale. We don't have scale because our site doesn't consume Sustainability, yes. We don't have scale because we don't have... Um, it's innovation. We are still learning. We are still practicing. So, of course, we are heroes. Because it's much, much harder to work in sustainable materials and sustainable projects than on the standard materials we have in the industry after decades, after almost a, a century. So. What I like to say to, to the audience, to, to, to share, is that we began, I would say, conceptually with 1% sustainability. But it was a great project that 100% we helped a, a small uh, familiar, agricultural familiar plantation on organic cotton in the northeast of Brazil. 
And uh, if society institutions would say, no, you're doing just 1%, I could, any, most of companies, most of individuals I could meet, they, they didn't keep doing their project because us society just said, no, you're not 100%. And we you know what they did? We didn't include, we didn't include projects, ideas, communities working because we were so ignorant about sustainable development. And I'm a very, very glad person, I think all of us, because we are living, our generation, we are living on one of the most important moments in the civilization, in the in this adventure of the human race that we develop what we have now. Of course, we're coming from 100 years of industry, of course, we have in the line of civilization we had so many times that the planet almost died. The glacial era, the, the great disease and the endemies that we had. We had uh, the world wars, the atomic uh, bomb that could have cleaned the, the planet off. And now the pollution in all the ways, I'm not going to talk about that, but we are, of course, we, we could understand that we have a, a dying planet because of old, old style of industrialization. But us, society, people like us, if we wouldn't be here and some other conference and projects in the world happen, it means that the mindset of us humans in this planet, we have changed already. We are living now in the 21st century, we know already technologies, ideologies, philosophies, how to keep economically developing in a sustainable way. So I'm very optimist. I'm a romantic, now I'm a hero. And uh, what I mean, I'm very optimist. That's why I think events like that, that support the design, the design that comes from the ethics and then aesthetics. Like the Greek says already, that ethics is equal to aesthetics. Aesthetics is equal to design. Design, when well made, is equal to sophistication. Sophistication is equal to luxury. So, ethics is equal to luxury. This is the things about new luxury. We forget about this. We think luxury is something snob. No, it's very noble. Because when we did the, because the most, I think you would agree with me, the most um, valuable, the most important maybe, uh, value of the human beings, the noble value that we have, is when we dedicate ourselves to the others. It's the most one. So when we dedicate ourselves, dedicate our time, our talent, our research, our love, you know, our aesthetics, to do something as good you do for yourself and you do for the others, a product or service or a, or a book or a, a, a movie, etc. Anything you dedicate yourself to do the best for the others, you're doing something that becomes sophisticated because you dedicate to the best of yours. If it's sophisticated, it's luxury. People forget that luxury comes from the word lux, light. Light comes from divine ideas, divine creations. So, noble is equal to luxury because it's about dedication. It's not about noble because you come from a family that has something, no, or, or other things. So I like to redefine the word luxury and the noble. We are all noble people here. It's Friday, come on, we are all here. If you are here to listen to me and me, and I share with you all, we are noble people because we are doing things for the others here. Of course, it's great for our ego, it's great for our business, things like that, but we are doing things for the others. 
to keep for the next generations a better world, of course. Um, this movie, we are going to present four of our uh, projects that we do in Brazil after these 20 years. Uh, but we have uh, now in the collection, in Osclean, we have more than 200 uh, references of products there that come from sustainable way, uh, made from more than 50 different materials we have developed on these 20 years. Um, please, could you screen the, the video? And after that, I'm going to talk if you have some answers about it. I begin with the human being. His relationship with what surrounds us, with the environment. When the spirit and the mind express it through a layer over the body, my work is to interpret and create these layers. A human body in balance with the city, the metropolis and nature. This is what I think Brazil can really bring to the world, the energy of our people and our natural resources. Preserving this wealth is the responsibility we have been given. It's a choice between full exploitation or preservation. consider Oscar my communication platform. It is an integrated perception of nature, culture and society associated with a sophisticated aesthetic. It's where I express values such as the pursuit of sustainable development and the concept of the new luxury. The new luxury represents a lifestyle compatible with sustainability values. It's a way of being that is the contrary of exceptionalism. 
The new lecture consists of assigning sophisticated design to sustainable materials, bringing together the aesthetics with ethics, which is the sophistication of sustainable material. The fabrics have the intention of communicating and representing these values. It's made by materials whose origin and production process respects a fair trade criteria and sustainable development. Recycled cotton comes from the reuse of textile waste, fabrics and knits that could be discarded by the industry. The recycling process, which eliminates dyeing and reduces water consumption. The water used in the dyeing processes returns to the rivers free of chemicals and with the appropriate pH. The use of this material promotes upcycling, helps to clean the planet, and to generate jobs. Fabrics made from recycled cotton are an industry alternative to avoid environmental pollution. Pirarucu is Brazil's largest freshwater fish. It's a fish destined basically for food. Its skin is often dismissed as junk. Its leather has a greater resistance than bovine leather, although it's thinner and softer. The capture of Pirarucu is done consciously and not predatory with respect to environmental laws and breeding periods of species. It contributes to the formation of associations of small colonies of fishermen, stimulating the generation of jobs and allowing a 30% increase in the income obtained by these small producers. Posso trabalhar assim eu ver com conceitos, experiência. Penso às vezes em textura, em cores, em formas, uma experiência emocional que eu tive, ou uma viagem, elementos que eu vou trazendo. Isso aqui é o começo, começo. Tem começo que a, a equipe ainda está na outra coleção e eu e o Oscar já estamos aqui. E, na verdade, a gente usa o caderno. Eu acho que o caderno é muito mais um espaço para a sensibilidade. Assim, é o que a palavra, o que não cabe na palavra está aqui, né? Então, já é uma troca, já é uma troca real estética entre nós, aonde compartilha, sabe? formas, elementos, ver cores, texturas. E a partir disso, quando entra no consenso, né, Ju, uh, parte para a definição do que é a coleção e da construção dela. E essas trocas vão acontecendo durante o processo, depois do desenho aí, da Juliana, ao processo de desenvolvimento com o restante da equipe de design de moda, Começa a haver uma troca e uma construção dos elementos com uma direção de estilo minha, de conceito, estilo, direção de arte, mas uma direção de design de moda, de linguagem de moda da, da, da Juliana. E esse encontro nosso, esse trabalho nosso, ele, ele cria uma bela poesia. fiber of natural silk is a continuous threading of a protein produced by the caterpillar of certain kinds of moths. Unlike its industrial production, the artisan growth of cocoons is made in plantations where there's no use of agrotoxics. And natural pigments from the Brazilian biodiversity are used. The different color shades make the product become a unique piece, exclusive and non-reproductive. Regaining the arts and techniques, where the threading is made in natural forms, the process of making income to the community groups is much easier, making it suitable to the parameters of social responsibility and environmental respect. Aqui meu ateliê tem uma mistura do meu trabalho de arte, meu trabalho de design, meu trabalho ligado às questões sustentáveis ambientais. Uma coisa puxa a outra. Meu gestor, como artista, são a síntese de um conceito ou de uma experiência. Você vê que eu não trabalho assim diretamente com a moda. Aqui são os conceitos, as experiências, os meus gestos como arte, minha sensibilidade, 
daqui que saem conceitos e alguns elementos para as, para as próximas coleções. A energia não é uma questão óbvia, somente estética. Afinal, moda são formas, são texturas. Então, mergulhando os conceitos, os conceitos de desenvolvimento sustentável. Eu estou sendo convidado a participar de várias conferências mundiais sobre o assunto. E eu estou vivendo isso. Acho que cada coleção é o que eu estou vivendo naquele momento. Recycled polyester fiber for PET packaging is an ecological product because it means the removal from the environment of a material that is difficult to decompose, which are responsible for 30% of the solid waste collected in Brazilian municipalities. Over 400,000 rag pickers are involved in the collection and selection of recyclable materials. The combination of these polyester fibers with cotton fibers enables the creation of a knitted fabric that has just the same resistance, durability and colors as products made with conventional polyester. desenhar e a pensar como usar, né, seguir né, o mais sustainable, mais possível, surgiu uma quantidade enorme de, de matérias-primas e aí a gente inverteu um pouco o processo que a gente sempre faz, que é desenhar uma coleção e depois, né, em busca daquele tecido que a gente imaginou, do shape que a gente planejou, inspirou, o que acabou acontecendo foi uma inversão desse processo. Os materiais inspiraram a gente, a montagem, a criação, o próprio desenho, né, o desenho de cada cada look veio a partir de uma matéria-prima e das suas limitações. Então, aquilo que poderia ser uma limitação vira uma inspiração. O tingimento também tem um aspecto super interessante, que ele não fica completamente é, uniforme, né? então a cada, cada produto é, é, é único. Isso se reflete na, no produto, eu acho, quando você fala em design e o uso desses materiais, é, porque eu acho que você passa a criar um respeito maior também por esse tipo de matéria-prima. Então o design acaba ficando mais puro, né? Você, você tenta interferir menos, valorizar a matéria-prima. Então a gente transformou em peças especiais, em quantidades limitadas. Um, é um processo de aprendizado mesmo, assim, em todos os sentidos. Trabalhar com produto e, e, e entender a, o quanto a gente pode usar aquele produto dentro da coleção. A gente usa justamente, por exemplo, essa cor. A gente não pediu essa cor, né? Essa cor aconteceu. Então a partir disso a gente pensa que cabedal faz sentido para essa cor. We have developed a shoe soldering containing rubber trimmings and residues of rice, straw and cork that would be discarded. The use of these materials encourages the reuse and correct disposal of waste and avoids soil degradation, reducing its impact in nature. It doesn't just help preserving the environment, but also promotes a source of income for the workers involved in the process. Se você juntar em ponderar grupos comunitários e, ao mesmo tempo, valorizar os materiais produzidos na floresta, você conseguiria promover o desenvolvimento humano sustentável. Nós fomos procurando esses grupos e, ao mesmo tempo, pesquisando também os materiais que eles trabalhavam. O nosso propósito nunca foi chegar em alguma comunidade com uma receita de bolo e, de uma certa maneira, vamos dizer, violar os saberes tradicionais. Muito pelo contrário, nós sempre tivemos uma atitude de respeito. Mas, ao mesmo tempo, nós entendíamos que a questão do design era fundamental para ele ganhar em escala, fazer com que, por exemplo, gere cada vez mais renda e, consequentemente, empoderamento para essas comunidades. A Oscar é muito aberta a propostas inovadoras, então a gente diz que a Oscar é o nosso laboratório de inovação. A moda feita num modelo linear diz, né, leva ao desgotamento de recursos naturais, muitas vezes a exploração injusta da mão de obra. Só faz sentido hoje em dia você desenvolver uma moda com propósito, uma moda com, vamos dizer, com um aspecto mais humanista e ao mesmo tempo solidário com o planeta. Quando a gente promove o uso de materiais sustentáveis feito por uma mão de obra comunitária, é da maior importância. Eu acredito que cada vez mais a moda tem que estar a serviço das grandes causas. Né? A moda ela é uma expressão cultural de um momento. Se nós olharmos como as pessoas se vestiam há um tempo atrás, 
nós vamos ver como as pessoas viviam. Quando você veste uma roupa da Oscar, você está vestindo a ideia que existe comprometida com uma cadeia de sustentabilidade, com as comunidades que produzem aquele algodão, com o impacto que isso causa para quem fabrica a roupa que você veste. Então, o Instituto E, ele nasceu para materializar o compromisso da Oscar e dar concretude a essa preocupação. Twenty years ago, we launched our first organic cotton t-shirts. Now Oscan consolidates itself as the largest sustainable development laboratory in Brazilian fashion industry. Our collections are reinforcing to the market and society not only our pioneering with the question of sustainability, but also to renewing our commitment through these 20 years as a reference of conscious and innovative practice in the fashion segment national and international. Since 2002, the production of e-fabric by Oskin has risen from 1,000 pieces to almost 137,000 pieces by 2015. The raw materials are really the protagonists, and my design team had as a starting point sustainable material that gave rise to diverse e-fabrics. The shapes, silhouettes, colors, textures and trim of our fashion shows are the result of a meticulous, organic and innovative work. And the result is a perfect balance between the technological and the artisanal. changing. Soon it will be irrelevant where you are from. There will be no more geographical nations. Instead, there will be lifestyle nations. People all around the world will connect based on ideas and attitudes that represent these values. I want to be a part of a sustainable lifestyle nation and I want to make sure that in my generation we did it. What we are doing now is a call for the urgency of adopting more sustainable practices and attitudes, bringing to everyone the concept that has always guided us, as up, as sustainable as possible, as soon as possible. It's a paradigm shift. It's an invitation to the world and to Brazil. Act now for a better present and a better future. Let's live a better world to the next generation.
encore moi. Est-ce que vous ne trouvez pas extraordinaire ce que vous venez de voir Est-ce que ce n'est pas magnifique Je demande d'ovation pour Oscar Mokara et Nina Braga et pour ce travail accompli qui est fantastique. Merci Oscar, merci Nina, merci Oscar. Yes, it's a nice journey, 20 years, from trying to do an organic t-shirt. It was very hard to do that. <coughs> Certifications wouldn't say it was or, uh, organic. You know why? Because uh, after one year and a half trying to do some six families, agricultural families, in the of Brazil, to change them the idea of using agrotoxics because it's much easier. You plant and you come with the agrotoxins, you go home and you wait. The agriculture for organic culture is very hard. And can you understand, can you imagine to, uh, for them to understand that's the better for the quality from the underwater soil for himself to change this, pay more, we should pay, let's pay more to, to, uh, to give them um, the desire uh, to change from a, a practice to another one. Uh, this is the research of the seeds by Embrapa, a Brazilian agriculture uh, state uh, institution, developed scientifically the, the organic way. And then also with a social NGO at that time to help to take out the children for the farms. We, we, we give the seeds and the money for them and teach the, the methodology, but instead they should take their children to the school, the school then, social. Can you imagine how many people, not few people, but how many efforts doing that? And then, one year later, I received a call. Oscar was a very small company, still a medium company in Brazil. And I call, hi Oscar, great. Uh, We have the old cotton here, it's ready. Where we send it? It was around five tons. I said, whoa, where you send it? Come on. Asking is not, we don't do clothes, we do design, we do concepts. We, don't, we are not a manufacturer. So I said, come on, where are you going to do? So I called some industries, textile ones, if they could do the, the fabric with this cotton. I said, no, Oscar, it's a small quantity. It doesn't interest us. I say, well, but this is going to be the future. You have to be involved with it. So go down. I say, okay, okay, but no, it's not. It's a small quantity, etc. So, first of all, most of them didn't believe in that. And we had to find a friend that had a small one uh, industry that could do that. And when I came to the certification, Uh, institutions. I showed the, the whole process that was made in an organic way. They said they couldn't give me the organic certification because the, the machinery used to do the fabric, it was an old one and they had some chemicals on it. So I said, come on, but what means? No, this cotton is contaminated. I said, well, but it's not an apple. An apple, if it's organic or not, of course an apple or a cosmetic must be 100% because it can contaminate ourselves. But on the fashion, on clothing, it's zero. If this piece I'm wearing is 100% organic or not, I don't have any advantage. You have to pay attention to that on fashion, sustainability. For food, That's why it's increasing so fast. And that's why society buys. Because they're not thinking about the underwater contamination. They're not thinking about agrotoxics being contaminated in people who work. We buy organic food because we have an advantage for us. We buy only for that. We pay more for that. But on fashion, If any product serves fashion or other industries, if this product comes from a sustainable way, we, we have zero advantage for ourselves. 
in the way of consuming that we consume nowadays, we consume, we want more by less. Huh? We want more status by less. We want more, more, more by less. This is what the way we buy. Huh? We buy more style by less. We try to get the cheaper and the best. And the more, the more. But when we have to choose between, let's keep on mind about, if we have this one sustainable and another one exactly the same one that, come, that doesn't come from a sustainable way, the choice I do to buy it, it's just because if I'm a noble person, because the advantage when I buy this piece, it's for the others, it's for the next generations. It's just for the others. It's completely different. That's why maybe it's going to take longer. Consumer society must understand where the value of a sustainability impact social there is in the production chain. It's a paradigm to be broken. Society doesn't desire sustainable products yet. Just few people like us. And even that, probably because if we, have, if we have a piece made in a sustainable way, that of course it's more expensive, because it's still innovation. Then we don't have a scale. If we have choice, can you imagine? It's the same product. If it's the sustainable one, we are being noble people. We, we care for the others. We don't have any advantage. So it's very hard to break this, but doing things like we're doing, baby, is gonna change. The millennials are changing. They think about, they think. Thank you very much for yeah. introducing your, your brand, uh, Oscar. Thank you for your testimonials. We really appreciate. If any of you have some questions, so we hold two microphones. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to the micro at disposition. Hello, Oscar. First of all, you are a hero. Really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. beautiful. I would like to ask you something almost personal. When you're saying that there are companies that do just one person sustainable and the rest is not, uh, if we look at the big companies who brought even the concept of fast fashion and who are pushing the consumption with all the marketing, I personally just don't know how to judge if the one person that they are doing is enough when they maybe even communicate a lot on it, they do the greenwashing concept according to a lot of people. How do you, how do you evaluate this sustainable action from the big companies? Yes, I like that. Why I wanted to talk about that. And, uh, two things about, first of all, of course, fast fashion versus, first, it's much more sustainable, not even come from a sustainable way, the producer chain, is us to buy less. We don't need what we are buying, of course. This thing about democratization of fashion, no, we have to democratize education. Culture, of course, we know that, and people know to wear itself with better quality products that keeps longer from design, from style, no, that keeps longer. It's not fashion, fast fashion, and quality of materials, and if they are sustainable, much better. So this is what I think about the fast fashion, but about being fast fashion companies or big companies. You know why? That's why I, I introduced that about my first t-shirt. I didn't finish my, 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 my idea, my concept when I was talking to you. It's very hard to talk. I can express on design, concept, etc. But talking for me is very hard. My brain like... Um, see, one percent. Let's take that uh, example I was doing about that families, agriculture families doing those, that project. Can you imagine if that would be, in some of the companies, that's why came this idea of 1%. They said, Oscar, this 
25 tons, and we can't even stop the machines to take it because it's so fast, that doesn't work. And it's going to be less than 1% of our production. So, at that time, people, it's not sustainable. Our, our, our cotton is not going to be sustainable. So I was in the mind, wow, if they don't take, if the industry don't take these five tons, that's 100% that's of that production. You understand? 1% can be 100% of a project, a sustainable project that's very hard to bring up. If we, society, say no to 1%, so we say no, that, I'm just taking something I had practice, I had lived it. So that 100% project, what's going to fail, what happen? We don't buy that. So that agriculture family, that uh, uh, social impact um, uh, NGO together, that project, what happens? They will never do it again. Those families go there to explain them, oh, let's do that project, etc., etc. They're going to say, no, I'm not going to do it again. So, what happened? This project that was 100% well made, well done, well sustainable, it's done as, it doesn't happen. Instead of being included into the chain of the sustainable development, we are coming from 200 years of the industrial era. We are coming from, we are living exactly a transition to a new era. If we don't have space enough and accept to be included those projects, they would never happen. So maybe this big company, if they do 1% this year, next year, wow, it's 2%. Do you know what happened? That project double 100% of their production. They will be smiling, happy, you know, self-esteem, everything. They will next year plan, to, well, let's do more, let's do triple. It's going to be 3% of that company. So what I mean, we have to understand exactly the traceability of this 1%. It's not greenwashing. Of course, it's greenwashing if some companies say, oh, this piece is, is sustainable. And they have 1%. And we don't know where the other 99% comes from. And this 1%, if it's real, a sustainable project. So the transparency, and we judge what we think about the company. Because let's not be naive. I'm not industrial, but I could understand the problem from both sides. If we say I know it must be 100 percent, okay, go ahead, just do it. Begin yourself. Try to do something 100%. Of course, begin something small, no? a small company, beginning now with just one or two materials, you can do something sustainable. But our industry from after 200 years already, it's huge. So we have to understand. We are going to say to know this manufacturer or industry, textile, they say, no, stop doing that. You have to be 100% tomorrow. Okay, I would say for you, if I was the one, I would say, okay, buy my stocks, buy, buy my company and do it. You know, I'm being very ironically, because I'm full of bullshits, you know. It's a lot, it's a lot. So I don't defend greenwashing. We have to understand where is it. It must be transparent. The traceability and the sustainable projects to be included. Maybe in 50 years, we are going to be 100%. This is my position on these big companies. Thank you very much. Yes. Unfortunately, we won't have time for uh, any other questions. I'm really sorry about that, but thank you very much for sharing about your experience, about the vision, the philosophy of s and Instituto E as well. We do appreciate. Uh, we take nothing for granted, so thank you for being with us, Oscar. Thank you.